Welcome back to Analyzing and Interpreting Evidence of Student Learning. Recall that this module delves into four main ideas in analyzing evidence. They are analyze relative to your learning goals and success criteria, compare evidence to a likely range of student responses, use multiple sources and in-the-moment evidence, and take account of students' prior knowledge and experience. This video will focus on the third topic, use multiple sources and in-the-moment evidence. In formative assessment, there needs to be a balance between teachers closely analyzing multiple sources of evidence to make a well-informed decision about where students are in their learning in order to plan what's next, and interpreting and responding to evidence in the moment. Sometimes teachers set aside dedicated time to really pour over their evidence, and sometimes they need to analyze evidence very quickly, making in-the-moment interpretations during the lesson. First, we'll look at multiple sources. As noted in the section on gathering evidence, when teachers collect and analyze evidence from multiple sources related to a single learning goal, they can make well-informed decisions about where students are in their learning. Fritz Mosher points out why. How do I know this isn't a fluke or artifact of what is going on today? including whether the student may have gotten up on the wrong side of the bed. Do I know enough to rule that out? Or do I have to try again, another brighter day? As Fritz Mosher states, the evidence might be a fluke, suggesting that students don't understand something that they do, or the reverse, suggesting that students do fully understand what they don't. When teachers doubt the accuracy of the evidence based on their prior work with students, they will need to collect additional evidence. The combined evidence provides a more accurate view of where students are in their learning. In addition, using multiple sources of evidence can lead to more in-depth analysis. For example, in circulating while students are working on a task, teachers can observe what difficulties some students are having and probe those students with additional questions to discover more specifically where gaps in their learning may exist and or the source of student misunderstandings. More in-depth analysis may occur at the end of each day or shortly after the lesson has concluded when the teacher can reflect on all the evidence that she has accumulated over the course of the day and or lesson and evaluate patterns in the evidence. Are there common points where a number of students are having difficulty? Does the evidence suggest that students be grouped to differentiate instruction to individual needs? These analyses may give teachers a firmer grasp of the evolution of students' understanding and skill development and reveal where different students or subgroups of students may be in their progress towards the lesson goals and success criteria. This information can be the basis for planning targeted feedback and instruction in subsequent lessons, as well as helping teachers better understand what learning looks like and what gaps and misconceptions may be common as student learning evolves. Next, we'll look at in-the-moment interpretation. During the course of a lesson, in addition to pre-planned opportunities for evidence gathering and analysis, teachers will also naturally interpret and respond to evidence in the moment. For example, students' responses to pre-planned discussion questions may not give clear evidence of where students are in their understanding or their status relative to a specific learning goal. A teacher may need to probe student perspectives and or skills further to clarify where students are in their learning. Or as mentioned above, as teachers observe student work during the course of a lesson, they may use in-the-moment questions to probe where students are. This is particularly important for students who appear to be struggling to discover and respond to the source of their difficulty. Additionally, when the pre-planned evidence does not provide a clear picture, the teacher may need to ask students to show their thinking in a different way to get a better sense of where they are in their learning. It's important to note that the same probing that enables teachers to better analyze where students are in their understandings can help students to clarify their thinking and close learning gaps. Now we'll pause and reflect. Think of a situation in your classroom where you didn't have all the information you needed to know students' learning status. What additional sources of evidence would have been helpful for you at that time? Recall a time when you have gathered in-the-moment evidence, 
How did this evidence help you to adjust your instruction or feedback? Pause the video a moment to reflect on these questions. Thank you. You have completed the third section of the module on analyzing evidence of student learning. This video draws on training modules created by Crest for the Colorado Department of Education. We thank the Colorado Department of Education for enabling us to share this work. We are also grateful to the following individuals for their contributions to these modules. Brenda Padletti Sullivan, David Sullivan, Anjanette Williston, and Angela Landrum.